Exile Radio presents Review This, a brief look at contemporary and classic albums, movies, and video games, shared by Exile Radio DJs and staff. Hello, everybody. My name is Kaylee McCarrick, and I'd love to talk to you about Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs today. Reservoir Dogs was released on October 8, 1992, and was Tarantino's first major film. The cast includes familiar faces to the realer than real world universe, which is one of Tarantino's movie universes, such as Michael Madsen, Tim Roth, and Harvey Keitel. These three play a moderately important role to a diamond heist led by Joe Cabot, who is played by Lawrence Tierney. Cabot is a hardened man who you can assume has plotted many heists before due to his strict no names policy. He refers to his crooks by colors as the brown, as the white, as the blonde, as the blue. Mr. Orange, Mr. Pink. And the men know nothing of each other other than their skills and their aliases, which in the end causes a bit of suspicion amongst the group. In the opening scene, you're introduced to each character respectively and get clues as to who works well together and who doesn't. After a hearty breakfast and a colorful conversation about Madonna songs and tipping, which a sour Mr. Pink, played by Steve Buscemi, despises. Uh Uh-uh, I don't tip. There is a segment where the six con men, their leader Joe, and Joe's son, nice guy Eddie. walk across the parking lot in slow motion. The beginning credits roll while George Barker's little green bag plays in the background, and you are immediately thrust into the action in the typical bloody Tarantino style. Suddenly, there's a frenzy. You have no idea what led up to this attention-grabbing point of action and immediately want to know more. How did we get here? Why are there suddenly only two characters, and what happened to the other six? This is where Tarantino's non-linear storytelling really takes off. Obviously, things have gone terribly astray, and we're here to find out why. With the help of a wonderful soundtrack and action-packed flashbacks, you get most of the story, but not all of it. That's something I wish Tarantino could have shown more of. I mean, half the characters don't even have names aside from their assigned colors. Essentially, what we have in Reservoir Dogs is a crime movie that shows what other crime movies don't. The dogs are no well-oiled machine. They're sloppy, they aren't the best at getting along, and they're all suspicious of each other. Tarantino has a way of writing dialogue that also shows that the characters are human. They're just a group of guys that have their own separate lives and are simply coming together for one specific job. They don't really care for one another, and they're not really phased by what happens with one another. The movie itself was low-budgeted, I mean, most of the cast wardrobe is out of their own closets, and it's the first time the world gets a sense of Tarantino's style of storytelling and witty dialogue. I think it was a great movie, but I wanted more background. The bits and pieces you get throughout the story are helpful for painting a picture, but it feels like there are plot holes that need filling. While Reservoir Dogs is missing the character studies and bigger ideas that you get in some of Tarantino's other works, such as Pulp Fiction or Jackie Brown, it's still a lovely example of pure storytelling. Would I recommend it to others? Absolutely. I've done it before and I will continue doing so, just as I'm doing now. Especially if you're a new Tarantino fan. I think it's a lovely introduction into the world that is Tarantino's story building. And it's also very interesting to see how said styles have changed from 1992 to his latest 2019 hit, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. For Exile Radio's Review This, I'm Kaylee McCarrick and I thank you for listening.